Welcome to the weekly podcast of the Cutting Edge Youth. For more information on our youth ministry, check us out on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash cutting edge youth ministry or visit our website at www.imedge.com. Amen. Thank God he loves us. Thank God he is a God of grace too. Well, tonight we are going to kick off our one-week series, teaching, whatever you want to call it, and uh, just calling it Let's Pray. And uh, you know, last week, or actually the last four weeks, Brett Drum was teaching and just did a phenomenal job on the Holy Spirit. And then last week was just, I don't know how to explain it, phenomenal. Uh, it's the only words I can describe. Uh, just so cool last week. Um, just to let you know, we had four salvations and we had 12 people filled with the Holy Spirit. That is Big time. That is, yes. That is big time. God is definitely moving in this place, and it's a good thing because our community, the world, uh, the town, uh, the state, all that good stuff, we need God. And just like we talked about in Man Up, we need godly people. We need godly people in this community and in places. And so uh, I'm excited for things that God is doing in this youth ministry. Um, tonight, like I said, we're going to kick off. This one, it's a, I call it a series, it's just a one night thing, but uh, we're going to call it Let's Pray. And uh, let, me, let me ask you a question, and, and I want you to be honest with me. Who in here has had a very hard time praying? Dude, I, yes, struggle, okay? Let me, let me run it through a couple scenarios, and, and I want you to see if this is you, okay? Because I can say this because this is me, all right? This is how I am a lot of times in staff, and uh, Tanya and I have talked about this today, and it's kind of embarrassing to admit, but I'm guilty of this. Okay, so let me, let me run through a couple things here. Um, sitting down, you're like, man, I'm going to pray. This is awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray. And so you sit down, you're like, Father God, man, I thank you for this day. God, I just thank you for, um, um, there's a ball game tonight. Yeah. Did that turn the coffee pot off? That turned the coffee pot off. Yeah. That's sad. Uh, um, yeah, dude, dude, I mean, last night, that LeBron James is a beast. Oh, my gosh. He was just, that was so crazy. Um, anyway, uh, God, yeah, <laughs> back to what I was saying, uh, God, I just thank you. And uh, does anybody else do that? Yes? Okay, good. I thought I was alone. Okay. What about this one? What about this one? You go in bed, you're, you're laying down, you're like, okay, I'm going to pray before I go to sleep tonight. And so you, you, you get all comfortable, and you're, like, you're laying there, like, God, I just thank you for this day. God, I thank you for every, <laughs> I thank you for everything you did today. And I was just so, um, right? Anybody else do that? Dude, I cannot pray at nighttime for that reason right there. Because I have all, like, I'm sincere about it. And, like, I want to pray. But as soon as I lay down and start praying, I'm out, okay? And so I usually don't even finish my prayer. I just like, God, I just, you know, that's as far as I get. And, uh, and so I heard this guy say one time, he was talking about it. He's like, you know, he, he was praying. The guy's like, God. I don't know what to do. You know, at nighttime I'm praying and I just keep falling asleep. God, what should I do? And God answered him and said, don't pray at nighttime. <laughs> Duh, you know, <laughs> sounds easy, right? But he's like, you know, find a different time to pray. And so I think a lot of us struggle with praying. I think it's normal. Um, you know, a lot of people feel like you have to pray for like 30 minutes. Like, you know, you have to get out in the stance and, you know, sing Kumbaya and, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you have to, like, do this thing. I can't do it. I'm old. I can't get in, you know. You know, you sit, like, Indian style. Is that politically correct? No? Probably not. Okay. And you sit there, and you have to have your hands up, and you have to do a chant, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you don't have to do that, okay? That's just, that's just crazy. And so we're going to talk about this tonight. Um, and so I think it's really good. I, I hope you see it. There's going to be some humor here, or attempt anyway. And, uh, and so here we go. The first time I was asked to pray in church. Anybody ever here been asked to pray for at, at church? Nobody? Oh, suckers. You're going to be in trouble tonight. Um, first time I was asked to pray at church, pastor tells me, you know, pray for your neighbor, right? Pray for your neighbor. And I'm like, all right, cool. Has she got bumps on her head? What? You know, what are we, we going to pray for about? And so he's like, you know, pray for your neighbor. And I'm like, all right, well, pray for my neighbor, okay? And so sitting there in a... She's like, you know, the neighbor says, well, I'll go first. And so she gets to pray. And uh, let me give you an example. This, maybe this is some of y'all. I don't know if this isn't me. Um, she goes to pray, and she says, uh, 
Dear gracious Heavenly Father, you said in the 6th chapter, 33rd verse, page 641, halfway down, left column, third paragraph. No, not yet? Nobody? That's nobody yet? Okay. You said, Father, you said search. S is in er, search. E is in, and I have to write all this down. E is in everywhere. E is in excellent. K is in kingdom. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the Jehovah, the Jireh, the Rot. And I'm like, dang, she even knows his nicknames, right? She's calling all these things. And so now it's like my turn to pray, okay? And so it's my turn. Now, look, I don't know. I don't have like the prayer language like they got or anything. So I was like, you know what? We're just going to try this. But I'm not going to let her out pray me. Anybody ever competitive like that? Don't want to get beat? So you're like, all right, cool. So, all right. And so you sit down and you're like, all right, so I'm going to do this. And so you say, Lord, you are good. God, you are so good. You are just, you are just finger licking good, God. God, I just, uh, you know, I just want to obey your thirst, God. And uh, because choosy moms choose Jesus, God. I just, you know, and, and by the rocket's red glare, Lord, you gave proof through the night that I believe I can fly. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody else ever? Okay, so that didn't really happen to me. But we tend to do that. We tend to think sometimes we have to outpray or that we have to use these big words that I don't even know how to spell, let alone pronounce. Right? You already know people that do that? Well, that when they pray? Dear gracious heavenly Father, thou was God. What the heck? Hola, como esta? You might as well be in Spanish, man. I don't understand it, okay? So here's the thing. And that's about as much Spanish as I know, by the way. Um, here's the thing, though. Oftentimes we think that our prayer life, we have to use big words or we have to outpray each other, but we don't. Prayer is so simple, but yet we make it so difficult. Jesus tells us how to pray in the book of Matthew, and we're going to get to that here in a little bit. Actually, you can go ahead and turn Matthew 6, and uh, we'll got to get a little get before there, and we'll get to the main part here in just a minute. But in Matthew 6, verse 5, he says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they, love to, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like pagans, for they think that they be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So let's talk about prayer. Who in here babbles when they pray? Nobody? Y'all are excellent. Y'all should teach. Cool? I do. Because like, if I don't know what to pray about, I'm just going to start finding things. Like pray for the cat that had three legs. What? Right? I've seen a dog with three legs. Name was Tripod. No? Pray for that cat that has one eye. I don't know. We, we ramble, right, when we pray. Um, here's the thing, and, and this is kind of cool. We should all be praying for everything that we do. Every decision we make, we should pray about. I prayed for my Jeep, be honest with you. Because I think God wanted me to have a Jeep. Whether my wife agreed or not, I think God just wanted me to be cool. I don't know. But I prayed for my Jeep. And when I found the Jeep, I was like, oh, dear Jesus, please let that be the one. You know, I prayed for my Jeep. And everything worked out perfectly. We prayed for our house. You know, when we moved to Shoto, it was like, you know, we, we got here. It was like, man, this, you know, we're looking for a house because, you know, we lived in prior, but, you know, kids were going to school here. And I was getting ready to start, you know, here full time. It's like, I want a house. I want to be a part of this community. And so we couldn't find any houses. And it was just anything was out of our price range. And we find one. It's like, oh, this is perfect. It's right by the school. And we prayed about it. And we got it. We need to be praying about every decision we make. You seniors need to be praying about what college you're going to go to. You need to be praying about this thing. Any decision in your life, you need to be praying about. It. You need to be praying for your future husband that's like 15 years down the road. Not anytime soon, okay? But you need to be praying about that kind of stuff. Everything that we do, you need to be praying about, okay? Everything. Um, pray, give you an idea. I pray for you all every morning. Every morning, I pray. And that may just be like, hey, I pray for you. Sometimes when God places certain people in my heart, 
I'll pray for them individually. But most times it's like, you know, man, God, I just pray for my youth today. God, I just pray that they make wise choices. Father, keep them safe today as they go to and from school or they go to work. I pray for you all. I pray for the leaders. I pray the same thing. For, I pray for family. I pray for my friends. I pray, pray for the people that I don't like. Because that's what we're supposed to do. Pray for your enemies. Love your enemies. But see, that's the thing. We, we don't do that because that's uncomfortable for us. If we don't like people, why should we pray for them? Because we're supposed to. We're called to love our enemies. Pray for your enemies. Pray for this country. God knows it needs it. Pray for the president. Pray for your leaders. You're supposed to pray for these things. Everything that we do, we should pray about. Everything. Everything. And we don't do it. We don't do it near enough. Prayer is a relationship with God. If he's with you all the time, you should be praying all the time. Now, in the Bible, they had all kinds of different ways they prayed. They knelt, they stood, they sat, they raised hands. It's the same way now. See, a lot of times people think that you have to pray, you know, You don't have to. You can pray when you're at school. You can pray when you're driving. But just keep your eyes open. We've discussed this, okay? We've discussed this. You pray. You pray when you're at school. You pray when you're getting ready to take a test. Because some of y'all need it. But you pray all the time. You should be praying. Now, let me say this. You don't have to pray for three hours at a time. Andrew Womack, who's a great teacher, and to be honest with you, I need to listen to more of him, but he had to say, and I think it was Andrew Womack, but he said something like, you know, I, ne- I don't pray for an hour at a time, but I never go an hour without prayer. He's constantly praying. It doesn't mean you have to sit there for two days and not leave your room because you're praying and singing Kumbaya, but you pray. Just pray as you're walking to class. Pray when, you know, and when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, man, I need to pray for so-and-so. But we should constantly be in prayer all the time, just praying. Um, and like I said, you don't have to pray with, you know, your eyes closed. There's all kinds. Worship is a form of prayer. Guys, worship is a form of prayer. You can put your headphones in, listen to music. That is, you know, and staff over here, every morning we do prayer, and that's the first thing we do. We put music in, we play. And I'll be honest with you, I have to worship for like 15, 20 minutes just to get like a two-minute prayer out. Because my mind is constantly going. It's thinking about what I've got to do today. I've got to do this on the website. I've got to add this. I've got this going on for missions. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. i got to do this. My mind is constantly going. And so for me to be able to pray, I have to get into Worship. I have to kind of clear my mind so I can get into prayer. But you need to find something that you can do that helps you. Sometimes you may not need worship. Some of you may be able just to go and pray. That's awesome. Some of you may need to listen to worship to pray. How many of you, when the when you get up and alarm goes off in the morning, the first thing you do is grab your cell phones and check Facebook or Twitter or whatever. I do it. It's the first thing I do, too. <laughs> first thing I do, I, my phone is right here. I wake up. <sighs> nah, whatever. You know? And then it, it, it goes later. I'm like, oh, shoot, I forgot to pray. All right, pray. And it's usually when I'm in the office. It's like I remember. Oh, yeah, I'm a youth pastor. Duh, I pray. But how many of you do that? Raise your hand. How many of you, first thing you do, Flip your phones and start. Okay, so it's normal. See, we're, there's a lot of people in here that do that. And that's fine. Some of you may be better to pray at the end of the day. My, personally, I have better when, like I said, when I get here in the morning, I'll say a quick prayer. And then when we go over there, I pray. And then throughout the day, I'll be praying just a little bit here and there. Not very much, just little things. God, pray that this service goes good. God, I pray for so-and-so. God, I pray for you. Just constantly just in prayer and not long prayers. Most people believe the longer you pray, the better it is and the more God will answer. 
Therefore, praying longer is the solution to everything. Wrong. That's not the case. Jesus normally kept his prayers short. Only twice in the whole New Testament did he pray all night. Since both are recorded in all four Gospels, you might think it was eight, but really it's only two occasions the Lord didn't usually pray for extended amounts of time. Don't let Satan beat you up because you don't spend 30 minutes to an hour locked in a closet in your room praying. Because that's what happened. The enemy will come and say, man, you didn't spend long enough in prayer today. It's not too good. So-and-so prayed for 35 minutes, and you only prayed for about 15. It doesn't matter. God knows what's on your heart. And we just read it a while ago. God knows what's on your heart before you ask. So therefore, when you go to make prayer requests, you don't have to babble about it. You can get right to the point. God, I pray for so-and-so. They're having surgery today. God, be with them. God, be with the surgeons. Keep the family safe. Give them peace, God. God, I pray for so-and-so. See how easy that is? But we make it hard. And prayer is so simple. Prayer should be something that you can fit into your normal day. If you can have a special time alone on your knees, eyes closed, or nothing to distract you, take advantage of it. Just remember, prayer doesn't have to be that way to please God. You should be able to pray while you're driving down the street, working, doing your homework, doing laundry. You can pray doing all those things. Matthew 6, verse 7, 8. This is a very, 6, 7, 8, 9. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like the pagans, for they think that they've heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Verse 9. Then this is how you should pray. And so right here, they're telling us how you should pray. And we've probably heard this prayer a hundred thousand times. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Now that sounds great, right? But did you all understand any of that? Let me break it down for you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. God, you are greater than anything this world has to offer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, I can't wait for you to come back and get us. But until that time, please help me live my life as though I was walking with you hand in hand. Give us this day our daily bread. God, I have a lot of needs and I have a lot of wants. And sometimes I get them confused. So help me trust you to meet my needs and to be thankful when you give me the things that I just want. And forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. God, I've blown it so many times today. And I'm sorry. Thank you for forgiving me. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God, as I start this day out, I am reminded that this world is filled with spiritual potholes. God, help me walk in a way to where I won't stumble as much. And for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And as I'm going through this day, God, help me live my life such a way that will bring you glory and you honor. And may I live a life, a life of worship to you. Amen. That is how God tells us how to pray. It is so easy. He wants a communication with you, simple communication. 
He doesn't want big fancy words. He wants your heart. He already knows what's on your mind. He already knows what's on your heart. He just wants you to tell him. You know, when something's wrong with someone or and I know something's wrong with them, and I'm like, no, no, just, just tell me what's wrong. Just tell I know something is bothering you. My wife, friends, my family, kids. Just tell me what's wrong. I mean, I know something's bothering you. What's up? What, talk to me. What's up? I know something's wrong. I just, I want to hear it from them. Same way with God. He knows what's on our heart. He just wants us to tell him. That's all he wants. Prayer is a direct communication to him. And we talked about this. Brett talked about this. You know, when you pray, Satan can hear those prayers and he, he understands them. But if you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you speak in tongues, and I know that may still be kind of weird to some of y'all, but when you do that, the devil doesn't understand what you're saying. Only God knows. I don't know. When I'm praying in tongues, I don't know what I'm saying. But God knows. It is a direct boxer between you and him. Right? That's what prayer is. He just wants you to talk to him. It's so simple. And we make it out to be so big. So what I want to do is I want to pray. And so I want to ask everyone to just close your eyes. Maybe tonight you're like, man, this prayer thing, I just I haven't been doing it like I should have. You know, I, I have good intentions. I, I want to pray in the mornings. I want to pray at night, but man, my mind is just constantly going and just, man, I just I seem I can't get a prayer out or I just don't know where to pray. I don't know how to pray. Tonight, maybe God's dealing with you on that. And we just want to pray over you. We want to help you get to that next level, to, to where you can pray and you feel comfortable about praying. We just want to help you get to that next level to communicate with God. And so if that's you, you're like, man, I just, I need help in that. I, I, need, I need prayer for me to learn how to pray. I need to step up my prayer game. If that's you, I want you just to lift your hand up. I see those hands. I see those hands. You can put them down. I see them. Man, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Like I said, I'm there. I see that hand. It's normal. We all go through it. I see that hand. I see that hand. But Father God, you see the hands that were raised tonight. And God, I just come to you right now. And God, I just, I lift them up. First, I thank you for their boldness. But God, I just pray right now, Father, that they just, they get a glimpse, to just get a vision of just how easy it is to have a conversation with you and how you want that conversation with us. God, that you know what's on our heart. You know what is on our mind. God, you're just wanting us to ask. You're just wanting to talk to us. You're wanting us to talk to you. And so, God, the hands that were raised and, and even the ones that weren't, God, God, I pray that you just help them, that you just help them realize how easy it is to talk to you. God, I pray right now for, for everybody in this room. I pray that they just have a genuine heart to talk to you, a, a want, a need to talk to you, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the afternoon, whether it's at night, whether it's all during the day. God, I pray that you just help them, help them, be with them, guide them as they start this new chapter in their life, praying better, communicating with you more often. God, I pray right now that, you know, prayer is also reading the Bible and spending time in the Word. And so, God, I just pray that, that you will help them seek more time, spend in the Word, less time on Facebook, less time on Twitter, five minutes here and there, spending time in your Word, getting into the Word, not just to get in it, just to say, yeah, I read such and such chapter today, but to get in it and to, to, to truly get it and to get it in your heart. Spend time in the Word. God, I pray that you will help them. God, I pray that you will give them that want, 
that desire to spend time with you, to communicate with you. Maybe you're here tonight and you just, maybe you're new, first time here. Maybe you've been here for a long time. Maybe you just don't know Jesus. You just don't have a relationship with him, but you want it. Man, it's easy. So easy to have a relationship with God. So many teenagers nowadays, they they don't have it, or, or even adults. You know, my story, I wish I would have been saved when I was your age. I'm glad I'm saved now. But man, I missed out on a lot of stuff. But if that's you tonight, and God's tugging at your heart right now, and you want that relationship with him, I want you just to raise your hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. That's awesome. A few more minutes. Terry, can you come up here? If you raise your hand, I want you to come up here. I want to have Terry pray for you. And, you know, I said it's just as easy as A, B, and C. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe Jesus died on the cross and confess your sins. It's simple. I don't know where I'd be right now if I didn't have Jesus in my life. And just because you get Jesus in your life doesn't mean that everything is going to be peachy and that everything is going to go perfect, because it's not. I wish I could tell you it would, but it's not. You're going to be kicked, punched, beaten. But you know the cool thing is, God's always there to pick you up, dust you off kick you in the butt, have you go back down the road again. That's how cool God is. God's always there to pick us up. He's always there to dust us off. You never have to go through life alone when you have a relationship with Him. Never. Well, Father God, I just pray right now. God, I just thank you. I thank you for this youth ministry. I thank you for the things that you were doing in this ministry. God, you are just, you're just working in ways that's just, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. It's just so cool. So cool to see teenagers and their lives changing right before your eyes. God, you are awesome. And you are doing great and mighty things in this community. And God, I just pray over every person in here, leader, teenager, doesn't matter. I pray over every person in here tonight. God, keep them safe. We keep that fire burning in them. God, this is a world of difference makers right in front of us. And I'd give anything to have the boldness that they have right now. God, I know they have the boldness. Just help them see it. Help them see it. It's inside them now. It's just hidden. God, help them see it. Reveal it to them, Father. Because greater things have yet to come. And greater things are still to be done in this city, in this community, in this youth ministry, in these lives. God, we love you and we praise you. And it's in your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Guys, God is awesome and God loves us. Man, he loves us.